The Earth's inner core is solid, and the outer core around it is molten metal. This is what creates our magnetic field. The inner mantle could also be a graveyard for ancient planets, but that's neither here nor there. That's been the scientific consensus since the 1950s. But a new research paper may be challenging that notion. But before we jump in, be sure to do the thing and like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. Scientists use seismic data from seismometers like this one that are spread across the globe to make determinations about what exactly rests beneath our feet. For nearly 70 years, the data from waves that have passed through the Earth's core have been interpreted as passing through a solid inner and liquid metal outer core. As we explained in another video, there are two main types of waves that researchers look for when trying to analyze this data. S waves and P waves. P waves are capable of moving through solids and liquids, while S waves are only able to penetrate solids. The previous, or would that be current, consensus on the inner core being solid was because we observed both P and S waves traveling through the innermost core. Similarly, we know that the outer core is something of a liquid metal. <laughs> liquid metal. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. Because when S waves enter the outer core, they aren't detected on the other side. But the new paper is bringing the notion that Earth's inner core is totally solid into question. Now, one thing I want to make very clear is that this paper isn't discounting prior evidence of P and S waves being present in the inner core, but rather builds off of those methods to create a much clearer model of the inner workings of our planet. That nuance is important because it's very easy for people to laugh at the 60 to 70 years of science that's come before and chalk it up to those people being idiots or something. What do you mean those guys were wrong? Then maybe these guys are wrong too. Science is a bunch of... But you're going to see that this situation is much more akin to seeing more detail in your favorite movie because of a Blu-ray transfer, which consequently has ensured that everything looks like it's taking place on a theater stage, than any kind of flaw in the science. Just as your TV, or rather my TV, because I'm old and I'm just self-aware enough to acknowledge it, has improved in resolution over the past 70 years, so too have the tools that seismologists use to peer into the depths of the Earth. In this case, the team behind a paper published September September 20th in the journal Physics of the Earth and Planetary Interiors, analyzed seismic data at five different locations where earthquakes are prevalent and potent. Jessica Irving, a seismologist not involved with the study at the University of Bristol in England, probably said it best when she compared observing the planet's inner workings to seeing the insides of a person with a CT scan, which, now that I say that out loud, sounds really creepy. And that seismic quote-unquote CT scan reveals a region of the Earth that is a mixture of soft and harder materials much to the surprise of scientists. Jules Verne saw the depths of this world as mysterious, and also hollow, but that's beside the point. In many ways, it still is a mystery. However, it's not hollow. Sorry, conspiracy theorists. We may be able to see how certain waves interact with materials deep within the Earth, but we'll never be able to directly observe the core of the Earth. At least as long as it remains molten, which, <laughs> Hopefully it does. Rhett Butler, a geophysicist at the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology, began this study thanks to some mismatched numbers. Butler was analyzing seismic waves produced by powerful earthquakes in five different areas around the world. These locations also happened to be on opposite sides of the Earth from one another, meaning that the core of the Earth was directly between them. However, after analyzing that data, Butler realized that something wasn't quite right. Despite the fact that these locations were exactly lined up with the core on both sides of the planet, the shear waves weren't being deflected in certain areas of the inner core. S waves, kids. And what do S waves do? That's right they can't penetrate liquids. This caused him to throw out the assumption that the entire core had to be solid. After all, data does not lie, but Brent Spiner might. Butler says, when you're in this business, you've got to match the data. So he and his co-author chucked out the base assumption that the rest of the world had relied upon since the 1950s. Butler and his colleague described the core based off of this new data as being a solid ball with pockets of liquid and quote-unquote mushy semi-solid iron near the boundary between the inner core and the outer core. 
Butler says, We've seen evidence that not only is it not soft everywhere, it's really hard in some places. It's got hard surfaces right up against melted or mushy iron. So we're seeing a lot of detail within the core that we didn't see before. While that is definitely a bombshell of a discovery, the importance of it has yet to be felt, as this could have greater implications, especially concerning the Earth's magnetic field. The new model for the inner core of our planet is a mostly solid ball of iron and nickel measuring around 1,220 kilometers, 760 miles across. Where things get a bit more mushy, Butler's words, not mine, is a region that extends for about 150 miles of that inner core. The inner core, which rests something like 3,200 miles beneath the Earth's surface, is responsible for the production of Earth's magnetic field. And as everyone who's ever been to that part of YouTube knows, the magnetic field has been the source of some concern thanks to the fact that the North Pole has been wandering away from its original location towards Siberia for quite some time now. Even I've wondered if we're not due for another pole flip in the not-so-distant future. As longtime viewers of the channel know, there is a theory for wandering events and events similar to it in the past. That theory suggests that inside the inner core there are two different dynamo processes that are currently battling it out for dominance one that is closer to the North Pole's original location, and another closer to Siberia. And this new paper may be the start of not only unraveling that particular mystery, but given enough time, we may finally be able to figure out how our magnetic field actually works, because it's kind of a complete mystery. We don't actually know what causes it. Personally, I look forward to that. We'll never be able to directly observe the Earth's core. Even if we somehow manage to become an interstellar species, that will probably always be true. Because the pressures inside the Earth's core are 3.6 million atmospheres and it gets as hot as 5,200 degrees Celsius, 9,392 degrees Fahrenheit. You'd have more luck trying to land an ice cube on the frickin' sun. Okay, probably not, but suck it, the core. I always hated that movie. But instead of leaving you with that rant, I'll leave you with Jessica Irving's thoughtful words on the subject. The more that we look at it, the more we realize it's not one boring blob of iron. We're finding a whole new hidden world. But what do you think of this study? Does a partially solid inner core totally blow your mind like it does mine? Let me know in the comments. And if you dug this content, be sure to like and subscribe. And hey, if you dig Earth science videos, check this video out on how Earth's inner regions could be a graveyard for ancient planets. Yeah, seriously. And hey, look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Liquid metal. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle.